Welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at library routines, and this is for Topic 8 Programming as part of the IGCSE Computer Science course. We're also going to be covering understanding how to create a maintainable program. Okay, the basic rules. So, let's get started. Library routines. When you write code for a computer, you can use pre-written pieces of code called library routines. These are like tools in a toolbox that you can use to make your program do different things. Each programming language has its own set of tools, like string handling, or finding remainders, or round numbers. To use these tools, you have to tell the computer which tool you want to use by writing a special line of code at the beginning of the program. For example, in a program such as Java, you might write import java.lang.string to use the string handling tools. When you learn computer science, you will use these library routines in your programs. For IGCSE computer science, you need to know mod, which returns the remainder of a division, div for returning a quotient, the whole number of part of a division, which we'll come to, um, round, which would round into significant figures or decimal places, and random, where we're returning random numbers. So I've got some examples in Python, and I'll show you these working with um, some of these examples. For mod, for example, if we divide 10 by 3, it's going to return the remained value. Right, it's remained 1. Uh, for div, 10 divided by 3, it would return the quotient of 10 divided by 3, so it would return 3. Um, rounding numbers would return, this would be um, 6.97, and then import random, which we'll come to a little bit later on. So here we go. Okay, for this first video, I want to demonstrate mod and div. Obviously, mod gives us the remainder, and um, div will give us the um, quotient. Now, in terms of divide and quotients, these are related to mathematical operation. The divide obviously refers to the operation of dividing one number by another. For example, 10 divided by 2 would be 5, whereas a quotient is a result of the division operation in other words, it is the answer to the division problem. For example, 5 would be the quotient of 10 divided by 2. So get two numbers from the user. Number 1 um, as an input, number 2 as an input. And then the quotient is num and then slash slash number 2. So that refers to the, um, the quotient. And then the remainder is obviously the mod, where it's number 1 um, divided by 2 to get the mod. Okay, to get the remainder. So we've got the div for the quotient and we've got the mod for the remainder. So let's have a little look at this. We'll run this in our first number and we'll divide that by three. And there we go. We've got a quotient of three, the result, and we've got a remainder of zero. Okay. I want to show you another one, another example where I've included the um the round. Okay. For this one though, what I've had to do, let's move that across, what I've had to do is I've had to import an external library, one called math in Python. So again, we've got the two um, inputs. But this time we use the div to get the quotient, and we use the mod, obviously, to get the remainder. And then I'll do the result of these two, and then I'm going to do a square root on that result and square it to two significant figures, just so I can show you the three um, in action. So let's run this program. Nice big number. Divided by 4. Divided by 4, and we've got a remainder of 1. And then we take that result. Yeah, and we square root the result to two decimal places. So that's going to round it to two decimal places using that there. So that is using an external library, but also internal libraries to run the various requests. When we come to importing random, i.e. to generate a random number in Python, we have the random module library, which needs to be imported. The random function allows us to generate random numbers between zero and one, it generates floating point random numbers. It is a default random generator function. Again, I'm gonna run this program and this is importing random, but it's gonna be a um, secret number. And it's a little guess the number game. And I'll show you that in a moment. So now that we're in Python, if I run this program, See, it's telling me, guess a secret number between 1 and 100. And it's completely random. That's too low, so let's try 78. Too low again, 89. Too low, 99. And you got it. The number was 95. So we got that in 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eight guesses. 
So that's a nice little program for using the library um, in Port Random. Okay, to finish off the video, and it's a very short video, we're going to go through why we need to create a maintainable program. So, <clears throat> the scenario. Imagine you made a recipe for cookies. Wonderful, fantastic cookies. But you don't write down the steps or the ingredients. A few years later, you want to make those cookies again, but you don't remember exactly what you did. This is kind of like what happens when a programmer writes a program, but doesn't write down how it works. If someone else wants to update or change the program later on, or if the original program wants to work on it again after a long period of time, they may have a hard time figuring out what the program does and how it worked. Obviously changes, updates and everything else will affect this. That's why it's important for programmers to write documentation and comments so that others, or even themselves in the future, can understand the program better. So here I've put down a set of rules. A maintainable program should always use meaningful identifier names for variables, for constants, for arrays, lists, for procedures, and for functions. A maintainable program should also be divided into modules for each task um, using either procedures, functions, or a combination of both. And it should be fully commented using your programming language's commenting feature. For example, in Python, we'd use the ash tag. So here I've got a little program I've created and I've tried to use most of the things which are listed here. So I'm going to run this and we're going to create a random password. Okay, based on two user inputs and based on importing random. With this little um, password creator program, I've tried to cover all or most of the aspects of creating a maintainable program. So we're importing random, we're using functions, defining a function called generate password, which has got name and time inside it. So if I run this, it's going to ask us to enter our, our name, um, a town, and then it creates a random number from 100 to 999 and generates our password for us. Okay. So it's taking the user inputs, it's generating the password, and it's writing us a little message to show us what our password will be. Okay, everything is commented, these little hashtags in red, to explain how the program was put together, explain what the different things are. Okay, that is it for this video. Thank you very much indeed for watching, and I will see you next time. Please continue to ask questions, leave your comments, hit notifications, and please subscribe. And finally, if you wish to buy me a coffee, I'd be truly grateful. Please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone. Thank you very much indeed. See you next time. Bye for now.